Good morning, everybody. It is Friday, July the 3rd, and we are having a traveling day from Oregon to Idaho today. Right, Copper? You love camping, don't you, Copper? This is my view from the RV bedroom door. I think the hardest part about traveling into different states and climates and areas is you don't know what to expect as far as the weather goes. So yesterday was freezing, freezing cold. We all put on pants and long sleeve shirts because it was like 46 degrees when we left yesterday morning from that spot in Oregon. And by the time we got to this spot here, still in Oregon, uh, I guess about three hours four hours away from each other. It was like 80 degrees, it was set maybe 75. But it was warm, it wasn't cold anymore, so everybody's changing out of their pants and into shorts and taking off their sweaters. But then once that sun sets, the temperature drops like 10 degrees immediately. So then as soon as that sun went away, I had to go pull out a sweater because it was chilly again. So it's hard, it's unpredictable. Uh, we don't know exactly what to expect when it comes to the weather. So today I'm wearing a dress, like a sleeveless dress with a sweater, um, sandals, because it's like, I don't know, 60 something degrees right now. And it's about 10 o'clock in the morning. And we are heading more east. We're heading in the Idaho direction. Our, our goal is to get near Boise, Idaho today and we're making our way to Yellowstone. So um, I'm assuming it's going to get warmer. We don't know. So we're all just kind of taking a chance when it comes to what to wear today and on our comfortability. The kids usually wear either shorts, uh, you know, and a t-shirt and then they grab a hoodie in case it's cold. But 46 degrees at that other spot in Oregon, it was a little too cold for just shorts and a hoodie. So, um, so we don't know what to expect. But I'm assuming going towards Idaho and going into Wyoming, it's going to be a lot warmer. So I guess we'll see. So close to these bushes. Hey, does anybody know what these are? Ivy, they smell. They're very fragrant. Uh, and Ivy thought they were lavender. But Caesar thinks it's rosemary, possibly. I'm not sure. I mean, they're not purple, so. But I don't know if it's because they dried out or... Um, or they haven't bloomed yet. <laughs> I'm not sure. I guess I can Google image it, huh? But they smell really good. So as of this morning, this morning I decided to have, I got, I'm getting at the end of my collagen, my Perfect Keto collagen, and my intention was to bring two canisters because I knew we were gonna be gone anywhere between four to six weeks. And it's, it's been about three weeks now that we've been on the road and I've gone through an entire brand new canister and I'm out. I didn't bring the second one. So unfortunately, it looks like the next two weeks uh, until we're finished traveling, I'm not going to have my collagen unless I get something at Walmart or something like that. So that's a bummer. I think I took my last collagen today. I mean, unless I can get together maybe a half a scoop for tomorrow. But... It's my treat because it's chocolate and it tastes good. And especially when I put it in my coffee, it's like a mocha, but, um, but oh well, what can you do, right? Uh, so I had my collagen coffee this morning. Yesterday I had the Bulletproof. I put the butter and the MCT oil. Uh, but today I decided just to have my regular collagen coffee and I woke up hungry. Breakfast was already cooking. By the time I got out of the shower, um, they had those little cocktail sausages and eggs. And then we had a little bit of leftover sausage from yesterday that, that they were cooking up. Everybody was eating and it smelled good. And I was like, oh, I think I'm hungry. Yeah. Okay. Let's eat breakfast because I I've noticing that when I'm skipping breakfast and just having coffee and we hit the road for four hours I'm starving and I am trying to snack on nuts or snack on whatever I brought I eat a quest bar a day and the next thing you know is I don't eat lunch so it's like I didn't eat breakfast I didn't eat lunch I've just been snacking all day and then we're making dinner and so like last night was that's exactly what had happened and last night we didn't eat dinner till like about 6 30 so I'm I'm not being very wise with um, my eating window and how it's all working while we're camping 
But, you know, and it's funny because I get that mentality of, oh, I better eat now, because if I eat now, I better eat now because I know I'm gonna be hungry later. So let me eat now just to make sure I'm not hungry or to ensure, you know. So anyway, this morning I was like, okay, I'm kind of hungry. So I'm just gonna go ahead and eat now because if we get on the road for the next four hours, I don't wanna be starving, right? And I've been snacking a lot on nuts and that's what I didn't want, but they're so convenient because they're in the truck and I should be pulling other things to snack, but I hadn't. But anyway, I digress. But this morning, uh, it made me think because my mother-in-law, you know, had asked, you know, made breakfast for herself and my daughter and asked my son if he was hungry and he wasn't. And she's like, okay, but you know, don't be asking me for a snack later. You got to eat now because you're going to want a snack when we're on the road. And I was like, well, that's, it's crazy because that's how it all begins in our life, right? Like we eat because we know what it's like to be starving. So we better eat now so we don't get to that point of starvation. And especially with this road trip, like that's the mentality I snapped back to. It's like, I better eat something now or let me pack a bunch of snacks because I don't wanna be starving. And in the end, I'm still starving. If you're hungry, you're hungry, right? So it doesn't, it doesn't matter how, it doesn't, it doesn't do anything, I guess is my point. Um, except train you to eat when you're not hungry. <laughs> you know, it's like with that statement to him of you better eat now, whether you're hungry or not, made me realize it's like, well, that's how I was thinking. That's my entire way of being raised. And, you know, you better eat something now. And, I, and a running joke with one of my friends is whenever I would visit her in Austin, she would, you know, we would say, are you, you know, do you want to go eat breakfast? And you're like, are you hungry? Well, I could eat. And that was always, it was never a question of, are you hungry? It was always a question of, do you want to eat? Should you eat right now? It's always like convenience or does it sound good? It's never like, are you hungry? So it just made me think because it was like, wow, like that no wonder it was such a struggle for me to eat when I was hungry and not eat when I wasn't because I wasn't used to that. I was eating because it was time and my daughter is the same way. She wants to eat because it's lunchtime. So if she has breakfast at 10 30 or 11 o'clock in the morning and boom it hits noon. She's like oh it's lunch. It's like no <laughs> you just ate. It can't be lunch. So that's I'm trying to get her out of stop. Are you hungry? Because you just ate. So you can't be hungry. So you're not going to eat because it's time. We're going to eat because we're hungry. So I'm trying to instill that mentality in her. Uh, but she's still in the whole like oh I didn't have breakfast today. I didn't have lunch today like the three square meals a day and at certain times breakfast is in the morning lunch is at noon dinners in the evening and if she skips one she's very aware so I'm really really trying to instill in her the the trying to understand the hunger part are you hungry because if you're not hungry don't eat and are you full because if you're full don't finish your plate that's another huge mentality that we were raised on right it was like finish your plate we're in the clean plate club like you can't have dessert until you finish everything on your plate and it's like that's how we stuff our food and we try to finish to try to get to the good stuff which is dessert it's just our whole system, our whole system is twisted, right guys? I mean, that's how we all have issues with food and America is obese and yada, yada, yada. You know, we're just trying to break these um, bad habits. But anyway, so I make breakfast for myself, right? Everybody was already eating. I was like, oh, okay. Yesterday I made a bad decision and I bought low carb tortillas. <laughs> uh, why, why, why? I figured, I don't know what I don't know what I was thinking. A treat, um, Fourth of July. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. But I bought low carb tortillas, four net carbs per, t per, per tortilla. And if you watched my past videos, I've already come to the conclusion that they stall me. It's for maintenance. And so basically, I'm ensuring that I don't lose weight. I'm gonna stay mate. I'm gonna maintain this weight for the next couple of weeks because I bought these damn tortillas. But anyway, in my head, I bought these tortillas and my idea was to have a breakfast taco in the morning, bacon and egg and cheese, or maybe I'll, you know, throw some fajita meat or whatever if we grill in a tortilla. I don't know why I felt like there was a need, but, but I bought the tortillas. So this morning I'm making breakfast and it is, I'm making bacon and eggs and I'm putting cheese and literally the eggs and the bacon finished cooking. I shredded the cheese and I just kind of stood there and I was like, that's weird. I was hungry when I started making the food and now I'm not hungry, but I was drinking my coffee during this whole time. So the coffee probably curbed my appetite, but I was like, oh, 
what am I gonna do with this? I just made it and I don't wanna eat just cause I made it. So I put it in a little paper bowl, put foil over it. I heated up a tortilla, toasted up a tortilla, rolled that up in foil and I just have it sitting there cause I'm like, I'm sure once we close up all the slides and we get in the truck and about an hour in, I'm gonna be wishing I ate something. So I'm just, I took it to go. So I'll put it in a bag, I guess, and take it with me and hope it stays warm. Probably won't be as delicious, but you know, you, you make these decisions on your journey and, and then you're like, when you look back, you're like, you can't be surprised that you stalled or that you maintained. It's like doing the clean keto, I realized I was eating so many processed things like the Quest bars, like the, like the tortillas, like anything, even though they were low carb, even though they fit into macros, you know, you start realizing like, oh, I'm starting to drift off in the old ways that I didn't like, that I started to stall and maintain and not lose. I'm doing the same thing. I'm doing the same thing. I'm not weighing myself because I don't feel like the scale is reliable at this point. I'm not tracking anymore. I don't know why. I just am becoming very lazy. I'm buying the processed foods like the tortillas and the Quest bars. I just kind of like leaned in because I'm going, well, I'm on vacation and this is my version of vacation, being on keto. I'm still, you know, staying low carb, but you know, whatever justification that I'm giving myself, but I should know better. And the same thing with like every day, I'm like, I'm going to get these steps in and I look at it and I'm like, eh, and I take it off and I don't bother trying to finish the steps. So <sighs> I got to be better. <laughs> the moral of the story is I have to be better traveling or not keto or not exercise or not daily routine or not, you know, in a new state with family, without family, like whatever the case is, maybe I should be better. I should be better. Um, and I'm mad at myself because I know I'm going to go home and I'm going to weigh myself and I'm not going to have the loss that I had wanted to see, but that's okay because I'm going to start again. But what I can do now is be better. And I don't know why I'm choosing not to be better. I'm trying to justify myself. And in my head, I'm going, well, hey, give yourself a break. It's not like you're going to a restaurant and eating, you know, carby foods like a burger and french fries or eating, you know, enchiladas rice and beans and the tortillas and the chips and you know like give yourself a break you're doing better than you used to do so that's my justification like hey but it's low carb but my keto brain knows better and so i'm gonna try to be better i'm probably gonna eat that tortilla today full disclosure um so yeah anyway that's where i'm at <laughs> and in oregon in this beautiful in the middle of nowhere place. I came to the spot across from ours to sit down because uh, our generator was pretty loud. But, um, but yeah, that's it guys. I will see you on the road as we travel out of Oregon, this beautiful state and head into Idaho. I know my mother-in-law is gonna wanna find a potato in Idaho <laughs> to eat. I will not be eating that potato. Um, we're going to try and see what we can find in Idaho on our way to Yellowstone, enjoy Yellowstone, and then head out towards Texas and, and head back home. Oh, it smells so good. It is so beautiful. That water is so calm. Look at those mountains in the distance. What I like about this place is that all of these sites are very far apart. So I'm standing at another site and there's ours. So it gives us some distance. It's not like we're right next door to each other, like at an RV park. Um, and sees and it's boondocking, so Caesar feels like he's out roughing it and camping, even though we're in the RV <laughs> with a generator. Uh, but we didn't have. We turned everything off last night. It was a nice, cool breeze. We didn't even have to have the heater on like we did the night before. So it's nice. This is beautiful. We love boondocking at places like this. We only connect at RV parks just to give the kids some Wi-Fi, maybe some amenities like a pool, a laundry room for my mother-in-law. She loves doing laundry um, and in limited water so we could take super long showers and wash dishes and do all that good stuff. But we, don't, we try not to do that too often. We try to boondock as much as possible because that's where you find places like this. from the 
state line. We pulled over on the side of the road so the kids can have their lunch and snacks. They're inside. We have to make a little bathroom break. We are literally on the side of the road. I guess we are a few miles away from the state line. I think there's an Ontario, Oregon that we're gonna go through before we get into um, Idaho. But this is our stop for just a few minutes. Bathroom break, quick snack and lunch break. I had packed my bacon and eggs in a little to-go bowl and I made a taco, ate that one low-carb tortilla and I probably left a little less than half uh, just because I was so full so I gave the rest to Copper. He enjoyed the rest of the bacon, egg, and cheese that were in the bowl. Um, waiting to get to the next gas station so I can get my daily bang, my road trip bang on and then I'm not sure where we're going to stay. We tried to stay at an RV park tonight, but it is 4th of July weekend and they are all filled up. So it looks like we're going to boondock again, uh, maybe for one more night and see if we can get a RV park um, the following night or something. So just a quick stop. It's hot. We stopped at a rest stop just entering Idaho. And it talks about the Oregon Trail. How cool is that? So, I got my bang. So we are here, we just crossed into Idaho and we are gonna stay, I think somewhere like right here tonight. So we still got two more hours. And then I think we're going up this way to Yellowstone. Pretty cool. Shrimp salad. Shrimp, shrimp salad. Salad. Shrimp salad. Yum. All right, it's dinner time. We've got mashed cauliflower. We have a shrimp and avocado salad on a bed of lettuce. And then we've got leftover fajitas and pork ribs from last night. This is it. So we got here Friday, July 3rd, to this campground that we found on. Campadium. And it's called Evans Creek Campground in Boise National Forest. The problem is, is we went all the way down that side of the hill to come out here and there were no spots available. I mean, this was a busy, busy campground, which of course it would be. It's a free campsite in a national forest on 4th of July weekend. But since there's no way we could find out, except for when we were driving out here, this was what we had to discover. So we're right by the water. It's a beautiful drive. The drive is what we came out here for. But, um, but tomorrow we're gonna have to find where we can go, um, which is gonna be challenging because it is 4th of July tomorrow and a Saturday. So who knows where we'll end up tomorrow but what we have is we actually just kind of made our own site. So here's the road. 
and we just pulled off over here. We backed up into those people's spot back here so we could turn around because we weren't exactly sure where it was going to lead us if we went down the road some more. And we made our own spot right here. Road, and then we pulled off over here. So we kind of made our own spot for the night. I think we're safe. I think it's good for just one night. And then tomorrow we'll go figure out where we're gonna stay. We're able to put the generator on and watch the movie. Caesar's eating, or. <laughs> I was waiting for another, please. May I have some more, please? There is only one bowl. 41 over 90 and we are about 12 hours after my meds so it is 9 30 at night and it's still daylight outside that's crazy